Hi guys, Charlie with Boxing Focus, and um, yeah, catching up on the weekend. There was an awful lot of boxing. Uh, it took uh, took me by surprise. Um, took me a little while to to get through a, a lot of it. So uh, I didn't even get to see all of the fights. I, I didn't watch much more than the highlights of Khan versus Alexander, um, for example. But we'll start with. We will start with Antonio Tava knocking out Jonathan Banks. Um, oh, if you had to listen to Teddy Atlas commentating, you, the guy is it's amazing. Considering how knowledgeable this guy should be, given his experience as a fighter, as a trainer, he really talks absolute rubbish. He is one of the worst, if not the worst, analysts slash commentators on um, on the boxing network. I mean, it, it makes Jim Watt sound sensible. He really does. He talks constant, constant garbage. And he, he forms an opinion, and then that's it. You cannot shake it. And it doesn't matter if you show him the evidence. His opinion is... It, 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 <laughs> is what he's going to represent. A brilliant example. Tava nails Banks in the first round with a counter left. And it, it kind of set the tone for the fight. Because after that, Banks be, be, was too apprehensive to come forward and, and stood off Tava for the rest of the fight. And he was he was hurt. He, he, saw his, he did a little funny dance. He saw his legs go a bit rubbery. And then they did a slow motion replay in between the rounds. And you saw the punch land flush, and, and you saw Banks's jaw shift as the you know, with the impact, and and you know the skin wobble the way it does in these slow motion replays. And at the same time, Atlas is saying, "Look how Banks sees this shot at the last second and rides it, you know, kind of rolls or slot or, or uh, spins with it." Like it's, was completely the opposite to what happened. It was. It's just astonishing that, that somebody could be that stubborn that they think, right, I saw it, that's what happened. Then you, sh you see what actually happens and they refuse to um, accept reality. It's, it's, it's astonishing. So anyway, yeah, he, I mean, he set up this, this uh, story throughout the fight that if Banks lost and lost uh, decisively, you know, basically was knocked out, which he was, that it would jeopardise his position as training Vladimir Klitschko. As if, I mean, he should, I mean, he's fucking live an example of the fact that trainers are not always great fighters. They're not, I mean, look at Freddie Rose, lost so many fights. The, the me the elder Mayweathers, you know, they they lost plenty of times, handily. You, know, you guys like Virgil Hunter, these well, was never a fighter. I mean, he's, I mean, I would bring up guys like Ronnie Davis, but I don't even know if he actually was a fighter because it goes beyond my before my time. But like, it's just like, I mean, I don't think Emmanuel Stewart was a a, a renowned fighter. I mean. Top trainers and top fighters are two different things. Banks' ability as a trainer is related almost in no way to how he can perform in the ring because in the ring some guys have it and some guys don't. You know, Tarver is a guy that has it and Banks is a guy that doesn't. It's, that's just the way it is. Banks was knocked out by Adamek. He was he lost on points to Seth Mitchell. This guy is not a great fighter. He's a sea level fighter. And Vladimir Klitschko looked better than he ever has against Pulev. Why would he want to switch his camp out now when he's looking as good as he ever has done? Um, besides the fact that, that this idiot Teddy Atlas is not on, a fly on the wall in, in Camp Klitschko, so he doesn't necessarily know the influence that Banks has, you know, it could well be that Vladimir calls most of the shots because he is one of these very intelligent guys. Who know anyway, whatever. Just very irritating commentator. The whole fight was just one constant annoyance. I was so close to turning off the volume. 
but you know you actually want to hear the action otherwise it kind of loses its impact a little bit so what did we learn about Tava? Tava's talking about winning a heavyweight title he didn't learn anything about Tava other than the fact that he can knock out a sea level fighter you know Banks is not particularly big he's not particularly strong he doesn't hit particularly hard he's not particularly fast not particularly great on his feet he's not particularly good defensively He's not particularly good at putting his punches together. He's not particularly good at anything. And uh, <coughs> on the other hand, the Magic Man is a very good boxer and always has been. So, unfortunately for Tava, um, he's going to have to wait until he's in with a, a legitimate heavyweight contender before he finds out that winning a heavyweight world title at 46 is probably beyond his capability. I mean, he doesn't have the kind of the size and the one punch knockout power of a, a George Foreman. You know, George Foreman always had that punch, and he always, and he was great in a firefight, in a very tough, grueling fight. I don't think we've ever seen Tava be great in a tough, grueling fight. Um, I mean, the only one I can really think of is perhaps one against Hopkins. So, uh, anyway, yeah, I, I don't expect too much, and uh, he says he was back. Well, back for what we'll see um, so uh, <coughs> sorry I just watched that fight so it's fresh in my mind <coughs> obviously the big fight of the weekend was Amir King Khan um, defeating decisively it was almost a shutout defeating Devin Alexander I expected Khan to dominate Alexander I mean I, I said as much it's just Alexander has shown in the past he struggles with aggressive fighters that throw a lot of volume, that throw a lot of combinations, and that's precisely who Khan is. You know, Alexander didn't have the power to, to gain Khan's respect with, with um, shots, you know, with counters on the way in. Uh, he, he didn't have the power to do what Danny Garcia did and sit down on his punches and really hurt Khan. Um, didn't didn't really have the 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 physicality and the, the grit to bite down and push forward like Peterson did and, and go to work just didn't really have the tools to beat Khan and, and that, that's the way it panned out does he deserve a fight with Mayweather now? and honestly I, I really don't think he does he's saying how he's done everything in his power but he just hasn't You know, it, it, in his last six fights he's lost twice um, and he's never even mentioned the rematch with the guys that defeated him. And the guys that have defeated him, well, one of them is better than any of the guys that Khan has beaten. And then Lamont Peterson, well, yeah, he's probably on the level of uh, Devon Alexander and Collazo, but then again, Khan hasn't gone back for a rematch. I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe he feels that he can't make 140 anymore, which I just don't believe. But... Just, I just, I'd, he needs to have a victory over a real top top opponent. Um, it, that's why I'd like to see Khan fight Cal Brook. I think if he, he was to then fight Cal Brook and then beat Cal Brook, well then maybe then, then yeah. Now now we're talking. You know, Cal Brook's got an impressive win over Sean Porter. Cal Brook's looked very good recently. Um, the problem for Khan is, unfortunately, I think Cal Brook beats Khan. I think Cal Brook does a Danny Garcia style job on Amir Khan and I wouldn't I didn't actually I would not have thought this before the Sean Porter fight but in the Sean Porter fight not only did we see Brooke in the best condition he's ever been in he was in unbelievable shape the guy didn't have an ounce of fat on him not only that we saw how calm he was under the kind of you know where uh, the f kind of firestorm that Amir Khan brings, you know, somebody rushing in with a lot of punches and being very aggressive. You know, it, Brooke looked ruffled for the first three or four rounds, but then he composed himself and then he just started picking Porter off. And he was landing the high quality shots, the short shots as, as Porter was coming in. He was catching him and, and it drained Porter. And you saw Porter fade badly late in that fight. And uh, fortunately, the judges were fair and scored it the right way. And I just think Brooke does a similar thing to Khan. I think he just catches him on the way in. I think it'll take him a few rounds to adjust. But then he'll start catching him. 
and uh, then Amir Khan will start getting hurt. So I think he needs that Khan needs to be beating someone like Carl Brook first because that's another thing. You know, if we would see Khan fight Mayweather. You know, all right. So Danny Garcia took a couple of rounds to figure Khan out. Mayweather would just it would be the same. Mayweather has constantly throughout his career shown that he's great at, at um, handling aggressive fighters coming at him, you know, picking his moments, picking quality shots and hurting and, and gaining their respect and then getting in their heads and making them stand off him and then just going to work. It would be the same versus Amir Khan. Khan thinks that he's got this, this amazing hand speed and he does have quick hands. But he doesn't have the technique around that, and that that's where his undoing. That's why Garcia was able to knock him out, and he was doing the same mistakes against Devin Alexander, from what I could see. And I do have an asterisk next to that because I didn't watch the whole fight, but from the highlights, you can see him rushing in and getting caught with counter hooks. Just looked like the same old Amir Khan, and the same old Amir Khan is not good enough to beat Floyd Mayweather. Um, so and and Mayweather apparently is talking up at this Manny Pacquiao fight, even though I don't really I think it's all posturing, but looks like he doesn't really want to fight Khan at the moment. Um, so, but the, yeah, I, I'd be interested. I would watch Khan against Mayweather. I'd be rooting for Khan, but I'd be picking Mayweather. So other fights of the weekend: Keith Thurman against Bundu. Um, it was a bit boring, let's be honest. Thurman, I think he was a bit arrogant and cocky because he drops Bundu and hurts him in the first round, but doesn't jump on him. I think he's thinking, well, I don't want this to be over too quick. I'll just, you know, I'll let him ride this one out. I'll get him later. And never did. But, of course, he wins a complete shutout, you know, 120 to 107 on all the cards. So it's impressive in that regard. I actually think that Bundu um, made adjustments and as a consequence, I think he, he stung Thurman a few times because Thurman was quite badly marked up after that fight. Especially if you see any of the footage of the, you know, the post-fight interviews. He's, he's got a lot of bruising. I think he was getting caught with good left hands from Bundu. Um, not enough to win any rounds, but enough to gain his respect and stop him going for the kill later on. And uh, of course, Thurman has a lot, had a lot riding on that win. Not, not, not on the win, on the not losing. You know, if he'd have lost that fight, it would have been a major setback. At the time, you know, you've got to bear in mind, the next year or two, are the last, you know, they, they are the dying embers of the Mayweather and Pacquiao era. That you know, that those this this is the last period of time in which these guys will be able to get one of you know a massive payday against one of the marquee fighters of their generation. So for Thurman to have you know, he didn't take any risks really, and it's kind of wise because if he had taken a risk, if he'd walked onto a good shot, and it's boxing, you know, one punch can change things. If he'd, if he'd walked onto a good shot and, and uh, been hurt, dropped, lost, it'd have cost him a lot of money. Um, so, it, even though it was boring, unfortunately for the for us fans, it was the right thing to do. Uh, Abner Mahrez looked very good. Uh, of course, he was against a guy who he could look very good against. I forget the guy's name, but it was uh, <laughs> his opponent employed the the uh, the Homer Simpson school of boxing. Uh, basically, hoping Mahrez would punch himself out <laughs> by landing clean shots. It was it was entertaining whilst it lasted. Uh, bruising, painful to watch, but entertaining. Um, it'd be interesting to see where Mares goes. I don't think he's well. It'd be got to wonder whether his loss to I think was it Johnny Gonzalez was down to overlooking Gonzalez. I mean, it looked like he, he the way he was open to to the hook that knocked him out. It looked like he, he just hadn't trained seriously at all. He was just taking shortcuts in training. So I I would be very interested in seeing a rematch there. And he has talked that up. So that, that's that's an interesting one. Oh, and of course, we've missed out the shock of the weekend, if there was any. Um, Tim Bradley draws against Chavez. Uh, this was an ironic fight 
for Tim Bradley. Not only did he get a bit, you know, unlucky, unlucky you know, depends what, if you're uh, into conspiracy theories, you'll say that Bob Aaron screwed him um, in order to keep Shabbos on the books. I don't think it was that, I just think it was bad judging from one of the judges in particular, but you know, having received, been on the receiving end of a gift against Manny Pacquiao, he now gets the opposite end of the, uh, uh, he gets to be on the uh, receiving end of a bad decision. So it's ironic in that regard, but it's also ironic in that there was a lot of head clashes and he got the worst of them, which is, uh, you know, is a first for Bradley. Obviously, if you remember the Devin Alexander fight, Alexander with quite nasty cuts over both eyes. Um, there was some very nasty swelling on Bradley's face. If you see the the swelling after the fight, it's, it looks painful. It looked, you know, his face was grotesque. So he did well in that regard to fight through that. Um, I don't think the draw means much. I actually think it makes his, his record <laughs> in, in a very in a very strange way. I think the thirty one one looks better than the thirty zero one. I, I don't know why. Just the numbers thing. Obviously not, not yeah, obviously not a boxing thing, but um, so well, so well, I suppose never mind. That that, that, that sounds stupid because he needed the loss first to get that. Never mind. But um, the, <laughs> the um, getting back, getting back on topic. So I've derailed myself there. Uh, you've got to be a little bit worried if you're Tim Bradley's camp at the moment because he has gotten into a very dangerous habit and that's the habit of basically getting dragged into wars you know you look at the Provodnikov fight basically since the first Pacquiao fight you know the first Pacquiao fight wasn't a war Bradley basically ran for six rounds he was was getting hammered and then Pacquiao coasted the last six but then He's decided that he needed to win the public over, and he's developed this mentality, and it's going to be very hard to shake. That he has to stand his ground, and it's getting him into trouble in these fights. You know, against Bravonikov, he was absolutely out on his feet. Very spectacular footage, um, which you guys will all have seen. He's doing a similar thing against Chavez. Um, he did a similar thing in the second fight versus Pacquiao. He was trying to land a haymaker. And was in the, the end was uh, getting picked off and beaten up. If he's gonna continue like this, he's gonna he's gonna decline a bit, you know. You look at what the way Brandon Rios has gone since the first Alvarado fight. I think I think he just lose a little bit men you know a little bit of that sharpness mentally so that you can't make the correct decisions when you're in the the depths of a tough fight. I think that's what happens to these guys that are constantly in wars. I mean, you look at, say, Rios versus Alvarado. Rios, in the second fight, was just lost. He was absolutely lost. And against Pacquiao, he was lost. He just didn't have any ideas. And it's hard to think when when your brain isn't functioning like it used to before you were in all these wars and you had all the sense knocked out of you. You know, so... <laughs> As a yeah, I'm coming around to Bradley and starting to be a bit of a fan. I would like to see him box a little bit more. I'd like to see him use his smarts a little bit more because the guy's a very athletic, intelligent fighter when he wants to be, and that's how he got himself to the, to to the elite level of the sport. And he doesn't need to mire himself in these wars. As entertaining as some of them are, he just needs to to focus a little bit more on the technical side and, and work on. Getting back to winning fights without suffering, you know, the, I can't think of a Bradley fight before the first Pacquiao fight where he really, he really got beaten up. So I think that's what he needs to get back to because he is one of the most most talented guys out there. Anyway, I've probably missed out a couple of fights. There were so many, um, it was hard to keep track of. So this is Charlie with Boxing Focus. If you've got an opinion, if you think I'm talking rubbish, I'd like to hear from you. So please post below and. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see where it goes. Thanks for watching.